Welcome back to Penguin Classics On Air. Every good book begins with a good first page. Now Penguin Classics On Air is happy to bring you First Pages with Stephen Morrison, Penguin's Editor-in-Chief and Associate Publisher. Today's selection on First Pages is Rip Van Winkle from Washington Irving's collection, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow and Other Stories. When Irving wrote Rip Van Winkle, he had never even been to the Catskills, the setting for his story. However, Dietrich Knickerbocker, the protagonist of the history of New York, had been happily. Irving dubbed him the author, no matter that he never existed in the first place. Rip Van Winkle by Washington Irving, a posthumous writing of Diedrich Knickerbocker. Whoever has made a voyage up the Hudson must remember the Catskill Mountains. They are a dismembered branch of the great Appalachian family and are seen away to the west of the river, swelling up to noble height and lording it over the surrounding country. Every change of season, every change of weather, indeed every hour of the day, produces some change in the magical hues and shapes of these mountains, and they are regarded by all the good wives far and near as perfect barometers. When the weather is fair and settled, they are clothed in blue and purple, and print their bold outlines on the clear evening sky. But sometimes, when the rest of the landscape is cloudless, they will gather a hood of gray vapors about their summits, which, in the last rays of the setting sun, will glow and light up like a crown of glory. At the foot of these fairy mountains, the voyager may have descried the light smoke curling up from a village, whose shingle roofs gleam among the trees, just where the blue tints of the upland melt away into the fresh green of the nearer landscape. It is a little village of great antiquity, having been founded by some of the Dutch colonists in the early times of the province, just about the beginning of the government of the good Peter Stuyvesant. May he rest in peace. And there were some of the houses of the original settlers standing within a few years, built of small yellow brick brought from Holland, having latticed windows and gabled fronts surmounted with weathercocks. In that same village, there lived many years since, while the country was yet a province of Great Britain, a simple, good-natured fellow of the name of Rip Van Winkle. He was a descendant of the Van Winkles, who figured so gallantly in the chivalrous days of Peter Stuyvesant, and accompanied him to the siege of Fort Christina. He inherited, however, but little of the martial character of his ancestors. I have observed that he was a simple, good-natured man. He was, moreover, a kind neighbor and an obedient, henpecked husband. Indeed, to the latter circumstance might be owing that meekness of spirit which gained him such universal popularity. For those men are most apt to be obsequious and conciliating abroad who are under the discipline of shrews at home. Their tempers doubtless are rendered pliant and malleable in the fiery furnace of domestic tribulation. And a certain lecture is worth all the sermons in the world for teaching the virtues of patience and long-suffering. A termagant wife may therefore in some respects be considered a tolerable blessing. And if so, Rip Van Winkle was thrice blessed. Thanks, Stephen, for an intriguing installment of First Pages. All of the books mentioned on the show are available wherever books are sold. Tune in to Penguin Classics On Air again for more programs and features on great classic books. This program is brought to you by Penguin Books, publisher of In Defense of Food, the companion volume to The Omnivore's Dilemma, In it, author Michael Pollan proposes a radical new ideal for the way the world thinks about food. Eat food. Not too much. Mostly plants. In Defense of Food. Now available in paperback. This is Elder Roeder. Thank you for listening to today's program. Visit us again for more conversations about great classic books at Penguin Classics On Air. The History of New York by Washington Irving is available wherever books are sold and at www.penguin.com.